Hello learners, this is Sean from the Kinder Care Education team with you again. Today, we're gonna look at measuring rain and how we can look at uh, weather and changes in weather over a period of time. So for today's activity, we're gonna look at building a rain gauge to measure the amount of rain that you might get in your area, and you're gonna wanna track it over a couple different days that you might have rain. So you might have multiple days in a row, or you might have to wait a little while until based off of the month of May or the month of June, what is the rainfall you received for that entire month as a total? The first thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need some type of bottle. Because I live in the Northwest, there's a lot of rain. So I'm gonna use this two liter bottle because when it rains, it rains a pretty good amount. It might rain constantly throughout a day. If you live somewhere where you don't get as much rain or as frequent of a rain, you might use a skinnier plastic bottle that way it doesn't take as much rainfall to fill that spot. Cause we're not getting an exact measurement. We're just trying to get an estimation for our area because you're gonna look at your area's rain over a period of time, as opposed to comparing it against someone in another part of the nation. So I'm gonna have a two liter bottle. You're gonna wanna use something to hold the bottle still. So I have a container of rocks. I just took them out of the garden. I could put them right back, uh, but something heavy that you can use or if you have a skinny pot for plants or if you have some larger rocks, you can use something and set it around the bottle so it stays standing. But with rain, sometimes there's wind and storms. So you wanna make sure you have something in place that's gonna keep the bottle from tipping over. You're gonna to wanna to have some method of consistent measurement. I'm gonna use a ruler, you could use a tape measure. If you don't have either of those, just you can get a small slip of paper and mark off one size and repeat that size. You might not have exact centimeter or inch measurements, but as long as each measurement is the same, then you're still using a consistent level of measurement. It might not always be an exact traditional method, but based off what you have available at home, you just wanna make sure you can consistently tell between one centimeter and two centimeters, or one inch and two inches, or one thumb width and a second thumb width. So you're just looking to get a little consistency on that. You're gonna to wanna to use a marker or something that you can write on tape with. With that in mind, you're gonna to wanna to have some type of tape you can write on. Scotch tape's not as useful, so like a painter's tape or masking tape like I have here. This is something we're gonna to use to make the ruler on the bottle to denote the distance. And then you'll wanna have some supplies to cut with. So I have um, a razor blade to cut, start cutting the bottle or scissors to cut around the bottle. Again, these pieces are going to be um, adult use only. So you aren't gonna use these pieces with your child. You don't need child safety scissors. These are the ones that the adult is gonna use to cut the bottle to prepare for the experiment. Uh, it's not gonna be one that the child's gonna do. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna take this water bottle and you're gonna need to identify when the water bottle, because I tried to get one that was a fairly consistent shape all the way through, not a lot of curves. You're gonna wanna find when the top of the water bottle stops curving and becomes a straight line down. And that for me is right around here. A lot of times if you hold it up, you can kind of see that indention of when the plastic's changing form because the density gets a little bit different. It gets a little more compact, you can feel it. So we're gonna to wanna to cut right around that piece because we wanna have a fairly even and consistent side. If there's a lot of curves, then one centimeter to another centimeter might hold a different amount of liquid. So we wanna have a really consistent piece. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that top part off and then I'll show you once I'm done with that what I do next. All right, so now I have my bottle into two pieces. I'm not gonna need the scissors or any form of cutting anymore. That's gonna be the end of the cutting, except for maybe tearing tape or cutting tape. Um, and this is gonna be the gauge that I'm using to measure my rain. So this is gonna be my rain gauge. Uh, we're gonna use this to control the input of water to make it fairly consistent. Um, you know, it's, we don't wanna have just this whole piece out catching rain because on a really rainy day, this whole thing might overflow within a few minutes. So we wanna limit how much rain is actually getting into our gauge in order to be able to get a consistent measurement regardless of the amount of downpour it might be receiving. So the next piece is I'm gonna take some of these rocks and I've got some leaves and gravel in there. Uh, really just took it straight out of my garden, but you can use anything you want to fill up the bottom. I'm gonna fill up till it gets back to that flat piece. So the bottom of this bottle has got these indentioned little legs that is gonna be variable on how much we have uh, rain space wise, water capturing. So I wanna fill the gravel up so it gets up to that line just above that. And that way the entire gauge that I'm using for measurement is all a consistent shape. And I'm not taking into account any of the weird curvature or any of the top part. So I'm gonna go and fill that up and I'll show you what I have once I'm done with that. All right, 
So now I'm done with the rocks. I now have a rain gauge or a bottle and it's got a pretty consistent layer of rocks down here at the bottom. And that's gonna be what keeps it from blowing over. For me, because I wanna make sure I'm as exact as possible, it's not gonna be 100% exact. There is space between these rocks, right? So the first little bit of rain I get is gonna fill in around these rocks, which will make my measurement not exact uh, based off of what I tape off on the bottle. So the next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take water and I'm gonna fill up until the rocks are just barely covered with water to make an even baseline. Now my rain gauge has a ring of water and rocks all the way around the bottom. So the next step I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna to wanna to go and measure out distances up the bottle for how I'm gonna track the water. So I'm gonna take tape and I'm gonna run along the side and I'm gonna measure one centimeter at a time. I'm using centimeters because it's gonna be a little bit easier to measure with. If you're someone like me in the Northwest where we get a fair amount of rain, you might be able to use inches or inch and a half. But if you live somewhere there's less rain, you might only get a centimeter or half a centimeter of water from a rain and you might only have to get rain every couple days. So it depends on how much you're getting rain and how much space, the size of the bottle and the amount of tape you use. All right, so now I have the measurements on my bottle. We'll do a close up at the end of the video to kind of make sure you can see how I have it. The marking goes all the way up. I use centimeters so I can get really clean measurements even if there's only a little bit of rain that day. But I go from zero and my bottle goes up to 14. So that means every single time I get rain, I'm gonna take the measurement and I'm gonna reuse it. So whenever we get close up to the bottle, I'll explain how we're gonna use this piece. But like we said at the beginning, I wanna make sure that I'm not getting a flood of water in when it rains hard. So that's where you take the top of the bottle and you're able to just squeeze that part in and the plastic's gonna kind of bend around it. And now we have something to slowly let the rain in if we want to, we can take that part in place, but for the most part, that's gonna stay pretty firm and pretty well positioned. And now I have a rain gauge. So let's go ahead and get a close up of what this rain gauge looks like and we'll talk about how we're gonna use it anytime we expect rain. All right, so what you're gonna notice with our rain gauge is that my zero starts at the baseline of the water that I added. So this is gonna be where the water starts being added to our rain gauge from rain. We have the top that's now inserted in and that's gonna keep us from getting a big flood of rain all in the one spot. It's also gonna keep having, from having leaves and sticks and rocks blow in. It's gonna kind of filter how much comes in. And the important thing to remember is we don't wanna use this rain gauge and put it outside and leave it outside for long periods of time. The goal is to put this out anytime we're expecting to have rain in a day and leave it out for one day to capture any amount of rain we receive that day. So for example, if I expect to get a lot of rain tomorrow, I'm gonna put this out maybe the night before or in the morning when I first wake up, make sure it's out in an open area where it's not covered by a patio or anything else or a tree and that's wide open so it can capture rain. I'm gonna let it fill up and at the end of the day when I bring it back inside, I'm gonna write down on a piece of paper or in a document on my computer, how much rain and what date I got that rain. So for example, if I take it out tomorrow and I get two centimeters of rain, I'm gonna write down that I got two centimeters of rain. Then I'm gonna re-empty the water and fill it back up to the baseline of zero so it starts fresh. And if in four days I'm supposed to get rain again, I'm gonna go take another measurement. If I get one centimeter of rain that day, that means two days in that month, I've received one centimeter of rain and two centimeters of rain. So for my monthly total, I've gotten three centimeters of rain so far. And I'm gonna just keep track of how much rain I'm getting over a period of time, re-emptying it and setting it up fresh every day I'm supposed to get rain. So the goal is not to capture the amount of rain you're gonna get an entire month in one bottle. It's to empty it, measure every day individually, and then combine those numbers. As always, thank you for coming to hang out with me today. Make sure that you follow us on Facebook and Instagram for regular activities that we post every week. If you get a chance to do this activity or any of the other activities at home, have your family share it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag KinderCare so we can see all the learning still happening at home. I hope you have a great day.